Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Training Bites. My name is Mike Gibb from AccountsRecovery.net, and with me is Mary Shores from Mary Shores Communications, who is here to offer some great insights and advice. Mary Shores is a second-generation agency owner, best-selling author, and creator of the Collection Advantage online program, which is designed to help collectors create and execute high-converting scripting to increase their cash flow and decrease complaints. Mary, I love the topic we're going to be discussing today because it's one that I find myself failing at all the time, and that's never knowing what to say when I'm asked a question I've never really gotten before. I love it. I love it. You know, one of the things that one of the reasons I wanted to film this topic today is because I was talking to a, a manager at an agency that I'm working with for training. So they're, they're a training client of the collection advantage program and this new manager, he's only been on the floor for about three or four weeks. And he said, I constantly get the question, what do I say when? And so I asked him, I said, well, what are your documented objection responses? And what I found was that they didn't have any documented objection responses. So it kind of got me curious. And then I started asking a couple of other of my clients and found out the very same thing that while they sort of have it loosely in their mind, how they should respond to, to things, not every agency has like a set objection response sort of list with the talking points of how you respond. And what I mean by that is like, how do you respond when the consumer says, oh, my, my ex-spouse was supposed to pay this bill? How do you respond when they say, oh, insurance was supposed to pay? Or, you know, all these little different stalls and objections that come up, it's, it's, there's a power in getting very consistent and having all of your team members respond to those questions in the very same way. And you'd be surprised because I did a little quiz with one of my clients and a lot of the collectors, when they didn't know what to say, they were referring the consumer back to the client. And I don't know about you, but I never want my collectors referring consumers back to the client. No good comes of that, right? We want to keep sure. that information in house. So let me, where, where do we start with this, Mike? I think where you start is, the, is first of all, making a list of all the most common objections. You know, the things that just come up every day, whether it's about the credit report, whether it's about my spouse should have paid this, whether it's about, you know, it's not my bill because of dot, dot, dot reason. So there's a lot of common ones that all agencies might have in common, but let's say you collect for the Department of Ed. You know, you might have a different, or let's say you do healthcare, let's say you do credit cards. So get really clear on what are the most common objections that just come up all the time, right? What's your sure. thoughts there, Mike? Yeah, I mean, look, I can, I can relate to that, you know, uh, um, Outside of what I do here at AccountsRecovery.net, I run uh, a youth soccer program here in the township that I, li that, that I live in, and I've been doing it for eight or nine years now. And every season, we get parents who uh, want to change the team that their child is on, and they give us a different reason. And over the years, I think by now I've heard every different reason why their child needs to be placed on a different team. And I've got a re, you know, I've got the response already ready for what I'm going to say back to that person when they give me that reason. So I think, I, you know, to what you're saying, it, it, it's it's become automatic in my book. But you know, having those, having them listed in advance, you know, would have helped me greatly. Like eight years ago, when I started getting these questions, and had no idea what I should say back to them. That is such a great point because, and that's what I'm seeing. So if you have eight years of experience on the phone, you know, and you're a veteran collector, then you, you begin to intuitively know how to respond to these things, right? Because you've had to answer that same question so many times and you can kind of work out even the best way to approach the answer that's going to get the other side to sort of stop asking more questions, right? Because the last thing you want to do is respond to where they just ask you five more questions, right, right? right? It's much better to move on in the conversation. So what it, you know, it, it kind of begs me to think like how powerful that would be if you could have avoided all the uncomfortableness that came in the first year or the first two years. 
and you know until you work that out so what an agency can do is after they make that list sometimes i call these pain points but after you make that list of the daily pain points just meaning the things that happen all the time you want to sit down with a piece of paper and you want to uh, list out what your policies are. Now, not because you're going to say to the consumer, our policy is, because if you know anything about me, you know that that's kind of on the do not say list. We don't want to say, we don't want to recite policy to people. Nobody likes right. that. But in order to work out, in order to work out what the response is going to be, you need to know your outcome. So oftentimes when I'm doing like, if I'm on, if I'm on a show or I'm doing a keynote and we're in that Q and a section and I'm asking for makeovers or someone to go in the hot seat, you know, they'll say to me, Oh, here's my, you know, question about business. And I'll say, what is the outcome you're looking for? So in all cases, when you're figuring out your objection responses, it's good to ask yourself the question, what is the outcome I'm looking for? So whether it's resolving a dispute or whether it's, you know, you want to get the person to pay the account or maybe they're threatening a lawsuit. So you just want them, you just want the complaint to go away. Then you look at your policy and there's always a path between the policy and what you want. And then what you're going to do is you're going to reverse engineer how the consumer, what is the best way for the consumer to respond to that objection to create the path to that agreement that you're looking for. And then once you've got that figured out, it's really easy to lay it out to the collectors, make sure you do some training around it so that everybody is answering the same way, the same time. I'll give you an example, Mike. Uh, the other day I was working with a client and they have a, they have a client of their own that even if, so it, it, this is about credit reporting. So every day they get the phone call and the consumer will say, I'll pay this if you take it off my credit. Now, a lot of agencies handle this a lot of different ways. But the law says you can't credit barter. You know, you can't remove something off the credit. And right. so, you know, the other thing is consumers can pay the debt and they can also dispute it through the credit bureau, you know, in hopes that it's a zero balance. It'll just, it'll just come off, you know, if the agency doesn't respond or it'll just come off the credit report because they've disputed it. Um, but this particular client said, no, even if the consumer disputes it, and even if it's a zero balance, we want you to return the dispute that it's a zero balance account. So leaving no way for this consumer to remove this. And so they were saying to me, well, how do I say that to them without using negative words? Like without saying, well, unfortunately, you know, we're not able to take this off your credit. And I said, well, you know, you want them to pay, so one of the ways you can do this is you can say, ultimately, we will mark it paid in full. And around this date, you know, the date that it's going to come off the credit report, it will organically fall off your report. You could say, fortunately, we will be marking it paid in full. It makes me think back to college and I had a math professor who taught me Cook's Law. And what Cook's Law, he, as he described it, was... You get a question, you know what the answer is, but you kind of don't know how to get there. So you, you know what the answer is, and then you sort of cook up how you got, how you got your answer. And I, you know, what you're talking about, sort of coming up with your answer first and then reverse engineering your process, you know, it just sort of reminds me of that. Yeah, that's actually, I'm going to Google that. I'm going to write it down. You said it's called Cook's Law? It's Cook's Law. I'm not sure it's very official, but uh, uh -huh. it's well, definitely something I remember from, one of the few things I remember from college. In uh, the Collection Advantage course, we, we work a lot on critical thinking skills. And so we actually developed a five-step process to how you respond to objections. And it makes it really easy because it's asking simple questions like, what does the consumer really want? You know, oftentimes a consumer will call you and, and they'll be threatening or maybe they're being aggressive. But when you, when you peel back the layers a little bit to find out what they really want, oftentimes they're just making a simple request. You know, one time I remember uh, a consumer, it was a walk-in, they came in, they paid their bill, and they, they went on and on about this documentation that they needed. 
And I'll never forget because my employee, Misty, at the time, she just was like, well, we can't give you that because it was the way the consumer was describing the dis documentation. It sounded like something she wasn't going to be able to provide. And when I'm, I'm kind of listening from the other room and I realize all this guy needs is a receipt, <laughs> you know, it's just funny because sometimes consumers don't always possess that language. Sure. So if you can figure out, and that's why it's good to pre-script them and document the responses because it's a great way to get your collectors have their communication on autopilot. Well, I'm definitely going to start pre try and pre-script some of my answers. So the next time I get a question, I, I, I've already got my answers laid out in front of me. Let me know how that goes, Mike. I will, Mary. Thank you very much for joining us again. Really uh, appreciate your time, your insights, your wisdom, and we'll be sure to, uh, to have you back soon for another episode of Training Bites.